Good day, mate. Forty here. I've been trying to watch the new Martin Scorsese film, Pillars of the Flower Moon, and uh, it's a grim film, right? Based on true events, horrible events in Oklahoma, I believe, in the 1920s. Uh, the Osage Indian tribe got really rich because oil was found on their reservation, and and then, of course, because they got rich, they attracted all sorts of predators who came to town to try to rob them of their wealth. But uh, I don't know who to root for in this film. The Native Americans are portrayed as pathetic, uh, you know, drinking and carrying on, carousing, making really poor choices, or they have diabetes and you know, they shouldn't eat candy, but they still keep eating candy. And then the, the white people in the film, and, predatory and you know, marrying Indian women and, uh, so they can get their hands on the wealth. It's just a depressing, dark film. Like, who on earth do you, do you root for? Like, who do you support in this film? What the heck? Aren't they ever going to allow the uh, light to, to turn here? Could you decode the fall of Eric Stryker? What's been going on with Eric Stryker? Um, to say that he's he's uh, fallen, uh, like, when, when was he in a, a, at a higher place? Like, he, to say he's fallen, it means he's come down from where? Like, where did he, where did he come down from? So I've been watching a ton of uh, Tucker Carlson. Like, he did a bunch of interviews yesterday to promote the launch of his uh, new, new network. And... It's frustrating because he, he's, in one sense, he's at the top of his game. Like, he's very confident. And, like, he's filled with charisma and energy and drive and process. And, and he's generally right wing, so I, I sympathize with his politics. But, like Michael Anton, I've also been listening to some of his recent interviews. It's incredibly frustrating because these guys become detached from truth in fact and you get the sense that they'd be very unhappy if you try to call them on the specifics of things that they've said and it makes me think that if they'd been less successful ah, if they'd been less successful they'd probably be more more careful with their facts uh, one example is uh, Michael Anton wrote a column after the election in 2020, saying that uh, the result was very dubious and didn't make sense that uh, uh, Joe Biden had won fair and square. But every single argument that Michael Anton used to make his case was absolutely, absolutely pathetic. I didn't stand up for 30 seconds. It was just like uh, absolute idiocy. And then after that, he says, oh, I'm agnostic about who really won the election, but uh, I just think we need to move on. Like, he doesn't want to talk about it. He doesn't want to stand behind what he said. Then Tucker Carlson came out a few months ago and said the CIA bumped off President John F. Kennedy. And what was the basis? Oh, he heard from somebody who had some connection to the CIA who supposedly saw secret documents that implicated the CIA. Now, I'm sure there are documents, secret documents related to the JFK assassination that do implicate the CIA, but they don't implicate the CIA in the assassination of John F. Kennedy. That's what I suspect Tucker didn't understand. That's why there was a miscommunication. Right? These documents would implicate the CIA in trying to uh, assassinate Fidel Castro and other foreign leaders and other bad behavior, which is why American presidents haven't fully released the JFK assassination file because there's so much stuff in there that makes the CIA and the FBI look bad. But not bad because they knocked off the president, but just bad because of the way they were carrying on with, with you know, other assassination programs. Okay. All right, what's going on? So Eric Stryker, poor audio quality. Okay, great shirt. We have the best shirts, don't we, folks? Huh. Um, I should probably take out my earbuds, but... Uh, how bad is the audio quality? So I just bought Apple earbuds. And uh, I've always used like the, the wired you know, ear, ear, ear pieces. 
that you can buy for twenty dollars. Well, I lashed out and spent a hundred and forty dollars on uh, these wireless Apple earbuds. I'm just dreading when I start losing them. <laughs> and apparently, there's an inferior sound quality too. We have the best shirts, don't we, folks? <laughs> so. I made notes so that this can be a high quality live stream. But uh, what do you think? If uh, if Michael Anton and Tucker Carlson like had been less successful, I suspect they would feel more fidelity to the truth. They'd be more careful. I don't know about you, but when I experience some success, I feel the irresistible tendency to become more careless. I remember once I had a very satisfying job interview and I drove away feeling great. And I drove away driving 55 miles an hour in a 35 mile an hour zone and I got a, a speeding ticket. I think I've only gotten like two speeding tickets in my life. But because I was feeling good, I, I, I got careless and drove away at a reckless speed. Are you still Adderall free or did you fall off the wagon? The wired ones click clacked on your beautiful shirts anyway. Yeah. Um, nope. Got back on the Adderall uh, Tuesday morning. So, oh, I forgot to take my pill right before I did this stream. So, the brain's working much more smoothly, even with this tiny dose of, uh, of Adderall. But it's interesting when I talk to my friends who are frantically warning me about the dangers of Adderall, turns out that none of them took it under a doctor's prescription. <laughs> None of them were like, diagnosed with ADHD and uh, took it as medically directed. They just freelanced <laughs> their own medication and apparently they did not achieve good results. Guys, we, we've got to follow the science. Adderall pills work better if you put them back in your nose. <laughs> Okay, so who is that BBC documentary filmmaker that Kevin Michael Grace is always citing as some great authority? He wrote, he did a series on the century of the self. Uh, but Michael Anton and, and Tucker Carlson, they remind me of that uh, BBC documentary filmmaker that, that we reviewed on uh, Kevin Michael Grace's Theatre Thursday. Uh, in that, I'll say something and it makes sense. And then they'll say something you're not sure about. And then they'll say something absolutely outlandish. And you want to go, wait, 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 stop, 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 stop. Um, what's the basis? Like, what's the, what's the factual and logical basis for what you just said? And Tucker and Anton, they both say like a lot of intriguing, you know, provocative things, but they're just so reckless with the truth. I, when, you, when you listen to them, you go, oh, yeah, that's good, that's good, yeah, that feels good, right? I'm, you know, I'm right wing, they're right wing, kind of have sympathy for the general orientation. But then I'll say something, you know, incredibly provocative, outrageous. Wait, wait, what's the logical, factual basis for what you just said? But these guys have become so successful selling what they're selling that they have graduated to a realm where they no longer feel accountable what they say and they don't feel like they need to take care with facts because they can just get by on charisma and provocative thoughts and, and that's the peril to being a pundit All right once you notice how su successful you can be you simply tell people what they want to hear and you just find an infinite variety of ways to tell people what they want to hear and you realize that your success does not depend upon fidelity to facts. And it's just incredibly tempting to uh, to just graduate to a, to a world where you're simply giving your theories and, you, and you're not tied down to, to facts and logic. Lucas Head of Adderall, it's anonymous. So I was listening to Tucker, he was on uh, X. Last night he did his first Twitter space for, for two hours and you had a congressman on there. You had an attorney general from, I think, Mississippi. Uh, you had 
uh, one of the billionaires from the All In podcast, and just enormous numbers for the Tucker Carlson podcast. Like he's enormously successful. And he's become so successful, he, he must feel like you know, he doesn't need to take care with facts. He, he's graduated to a higher realm. Right, so I, look, you know, I enjoy listening to Tucker, I enjoy listening to Anton, I enjoy reading them. But what do you do with someone who has moved himself into a post fact world? It's, it's like if you're listening to someone who strives for fidelity and truth and optimizes for truth, then you kind of relax and you, and you may recognize the person has blind spots and ignorance and misunderstand some things and is just not well informed in certain areas. But if the person you're listening to optimizes for truth, then there's a you know, certain, you can, you can deal with that. And with all their weaknesses and craziness, right, you can deal with that. But when they don't optimize for truth, they just optimize for being provocative and telling an audience what it wants to hear. And they just optimize for their career and their power. I, it's, it becomes incredibly frustrating to listen to because it takes you know so much work to try to figure out you know what what they're saying is this fit based in reality? Is there some factual and logical basis to, the, to this part? So, not sure how to handle Anton and Tucker just because of the, the reckless disregard they have for facts, along with you know many potentially fascinating insights, but it seems like both Tucker and Anton, and I like both of them, but I have to reluctantly admit they have graduated to becoming gurus whose stock in trade is relaying pseudo profound BS. Right? Many of the things they state sound incredibly profound, but upon examination, right, many of their points just disappear because it's not a strong logical and factual basis. Alternative facts. So, I mean, how do you deal with people who don't really care about the truth? I mean, they're, they're tiring, right? So it, it's so easy just to get swept away listening to Tucker and Anton. Like it feels really good, at least it does for me, because they're they're on my political emotional wavelength, and they just seem so brave. Right? They seem like truth tellers, and they seem like beacons of light in a dark age. Now you may be wondering, forty, there's just golden, beautiful light over you right now. Well, that's the light of truth, guys. That's because I optimize for truth. That's, that's why there's such you know, beautiful light that's shining on me. Yeah, so it's just very tiring trying to you know, sort through what they're saying and see what's verifiable, what's unverifiable. I mean, Tucker was saying, he just routinely uh, said, oh, you know, Australia put people in concentration camps during their COVID lockdown. I mean, Australia was far more rigorous with its COVID lockdowns than the United States. And according to the evidence I've seen, I think most of the, the lockdowns in Australia and in the United States were well advised. So some of it was obviously overdone. But the idea that Australia put people in concentration camps, I mean, concentration camps means to the, the number one meaning of concentration camps is killing camps. Uh, that's what people associate with concentration camps. So to say that Australia put people in the concentration camps during COVID is just obscene. But it, it's something that Tucker Carlson just tosses off all the time. And uh, Megan Kelly had him uh, on her show yesterday, and she like congratulated Tucker for for the way he approached COVID, which just seems absurd. But the cottages were kept open. Yeah, I'm just going to keep walking in the light. So I guess it comes down to uh, on what basis do you choose your podcasts? Right? You choose something that feels good. So what may you say, you know, 40, your, your podcasts don't feel good. There's, there's a poor technical quality. 
I, I don't like that thing that you can put on your phone so that the, the phone doesn't bounce around, right? It just seems like really intrusive to walk around with that in, in public. Like there's a time and a place for it where you know, it'd be appropriate, but it's just, you know, it calls a lot of attention to yourself and I'm a very you know, humble servant of the truth. I don't want to call you know, gratuitous attention to myself. So, so I, I'm, you know, I've been doing without that device to, to get rid of the jumpiness when I walk around in these live streams because it's just too obtrusive. Like I'm walking down the street, minding my own business, thinking about the Torah and uh, my observance of the Sabbath. Like I wouldn't want like, that live stream as you know, carrying their phones on that stick thing. Uh, it's too much. So it's part of my you know, concern for society. We live in society. You know, I don't, don't put my phone on a gimbal. Right? I, I rarely put my phone on a gimbal now because it's just too obtrusive, just too attention-getting. It dislocates and discomforts people. I take my fellow man into account, so not, not using a gimbal as I walk along, just humbly walking in the light of truth, just sharing a few anecdotes and opinions with you, just humbly walking with my God, gimballess. And, uh, and so I, I deliberately using this you know, lack of technology, inferior technology, you know, inferior technical skill so that my shows aren't pleasant to listen to, so that they're, they're morally and factually challenging, right? So it's not just you tune in and you hear what you want to hear, because with people like Anton and Tucker and I guess the other gurus, Oprah, I mean, Tucker and Anton, you know, approaching Oprah-like status for their viewers, where they just say these things that sound amazing, but just they can, much of it just completely falls apart upon analysis, or it's just trite because nobody has huge tre treasure trove of original ideas. But uh, you can, yeah, you, I guess you can choose your podcast and your punditry and your gurus and your teachers on the basis of what feels good. And if you're right wing, right, uh, Tucker Pass and Michael Anton definitely feel good, but they have so, they're so disconnected from fidelity, from even trying to be actually correct and truthful in what they say. And they become drawn into the path of controversy and attention seeking and power seeking and numbers seeking and status seeking, Italian particular audience, what they want to hear. And neither Anton nor Tucker give many interviews to people who aren't already predisposed and friendly to them. And so, you know, on the one hand, I enjoy Tucker, but as I was not listening to him, the more and more disconnected he seems to be getting from reality the more he seems to be turning into another guru who just has a stock in trade of uh, spouting pseudo-profound BS. Anyway, have you seen Killers of the Flower Moon? Just such a grim movie. I had made two attempts to get through it, and I'm, I'm less than halfway through by now. And, and many critics say this is the best movie of the year. Well, it's not just a hairstyle, guys. It's a lifestyle. Yeah, Fordy doesn't want to be heard talking about Tucker in LA. It's been a long time since you went out with uplifting music. That's true. I thought you liked attention. Yeah, I do. Certain kinds, anyway. But uh, Tucker's launching his big streaming service, right? $9 a month. And... Uh, talks about how he's essentially taken his whole crew with him from Fox. You know, many of them live with him. That uh, he doesn't, <laughs> Tucker said that, I can tell you, he doesn't have good boundaries. It was kind of fun listening to Tucker curse. Just on occasion, he doesn't, he doesn't habitually curse. But in his interview with, with Megan, like he, he tells off the occasional F-bomb and the occasional S-word. And uh, it's kind of shocking to hear it, but also fun and transgressive. So, 
I understand why Michael Wolf would write about Tucker that you know, everyone who spent time around him will tend to like him. He's like immensely likable. And uh, starting a streaming service with a subscription model to make it less vulnerable to advertisers. I was also interested, he said that he hasn't made a penny from his videos on X. So Elon Musk and X, they do pay people to produce content. I wonder why Tucker was not interested in that. But apparently he's taking his whole crew with him. He's not independently wealthy. And so he must have been paying their bills for the last months. And I guess many of them live with him or near him. And they just hang out with him. And that, that does ring true, right? But uh, he's got an intensely loyal group of people who, who work for him.